What's up, everyone? Welcome back to this edition of the Acting Bad Broadcast. Uh, took a week off, but I had to prepare. Maybe I even took two weeks off. I don't know. Like I say always, I'm the one that has to be the talent. I'm the one that has to edit it and put it together. So, hey, sometimes I just be be chilling on it. But we're back. Um, had a crazy weekend. Two cities, one gas. So I'm going to get into that a little bit. Um, ton of traveling, but a ton of players to match the traveling. So it made the weekend uh, so crazy, so rewarding. And just so fun to be a part of this uh, grassroots space. So without further ado, without further ado, let's get it. So, yeah, this is our second or third year doing two cities, one gas. So basically, it's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, we're in two cities and it's one gas. So um, this year we were in Houston at the MI3 Center and Duncanville at Duncanville Fieldhouse. Um, for the past couple of weeks, I've been hinting and teasing at me being in both places. And as we got closer and closer to the actual event, my um, excitement to be in two places at once uh, started to shrink Um it's just a lot of work, man. Um, I'm blessed to be in this space, but uh, just once you get through getting all the teams in, once you get through doing the schedule, the prep for the event is harder than the event itself, running the events. Um, but Wednesday, um, we got the schedule right, and I was like, all right, let's make that move. So went down to San Antonio, saw my family, saw my dog real quick, and then shot to Houston for Friday, and it was on. Uh, Friday and Saturday, I was in Houston. And then Friday midday, we drove me and uh, Ryan Massa drove back to uh, Dallas to prepare for Sunday. Um, the Sunday schedules were even more loaded than the Friday and Saturdays um, in both sites. So waking up Sunday in Dallas um, and then the crew back in Houston, waking up Sunday in Houston, there was just a little more pep in our step because we know we was going to get some big time matchups um, this weekend was insane. Um, almost too insane to where what I'm putting down my rundown for the act and bad broadcast. It's just too many names. So I apologize in advance because this could be a three or four hour uh, thing. And we just not going to do all that. Um, I'm not a streamer. I don't see them big bucks coming in from doing this, but um, let's just get it started, man. Um, like I said earlier, I'm the editor, so I don't know how this is going to be edited. Um, it might just be a fly picture or I might have some highlights behind who I'm talking about, but either way, if you're on the acting bad broadcast, you know what time it is. You acted really, really bad. So without further ado, uh, shop makers. This is exactly what it is. Uh, when you want to get me hype being in two cities at once, driving all the miles on the Jeep, um, the easiest way for me to turn up is to watch y'all hit shots. So right off the bat, uh, Princeton Bynum, TJ Ford, Friday night, got so, so busy. Uh, TJ Ford only played in the gas so one night, but I think Prince Debiam got enough buckets for the whole weekend. Insane 2027 prospect. Uh, just when you can go off the dribble the way you do, crazy, man, crazy. Um, still staying in Houston, Jerry's Jackson Jr., the HD Toros. Um, I mentioned a little bit on our Gasso cast earlier, but six threes against JL3 EYBL. Um, the kids used to play in big basketball. John Jay High School is in the same district as San Antonio Harlan and San Antonio Brennan. So he's been playing in big time games and having big time moments. So those threes, and I think it was more so, it was six threes, but the way he was, he was on a heater most of the game, really getting to it. So shout out to you, Jarius. Um, another guy, Chandler Beasley of Hyperfuse. Now I have no video on him, um, but all I have is what I saw. And the ISO move I saw when I was sitting down watching was just insane. Um, so he had to be on my acting bad list of shot makers. Moving to Dallas Sunday, uh, Salas Rodriguez, I heard he had a 30-something ball. Maybe it was 37, maybe it was 32, but let's just say 37. Uh, he didn't have 37 at our event, but it was very evident why the Gasso staff loves him so much. Um, his ability to shoot just and make the toughest shots um, off the dribble. Um, he's just a dude when, when, when the shot's falling. And then Josh Weems from Flash Elite. The kid plays almost like a Russell Westbrook. His D-cell is so crazy in transition. He's able to stop on a dime. 
and he had one of those heaters that I think probably was when I'm watching probably one of the heaters of the weekend across both cities. Um, Josh Williams from Flash Elite acting really bad. So yeah, those are my shot makers. Uh, moving on to go-getters. Now, go-getters can be a lot of different definitions. Um, I don't know, man. When I'm listening to these dudes, I just, there's something tells me that like you give them the ball, they just gonna make something happen. Um, three level scores, most likely, um, just getting to it. So let's start off again in Houston, Elijah Garrett. Going into two cities, one gas. So he was probably one of my favorite prospects to get a, get another look at um, for JL3 EYBL. Um, a bully guard. Um, just his pace, his speed and transition. The ability to get to the rim, finish, crafty. Uh, caught a body. I guess when I say he caught a body, then I will show it right here. Caught a body. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Um but just, yeah, man, he's turned into one of my favorite guards in the state. I can't wait to see him. I think uh, JL3 UIBL 16s are coming uh, back up to Dallas um, in two weeks. So excited to see that. Uh, Jackson Townsend, Blade Elite. Um, I was talking to my boy Greg for Blade Elite. I'm like, how are you feeling? He's like, I mean, I got Jackson Townsend. Um, and Jackson Townsend led them, to, led them to a 3 0 weekend. Um, just so crafty um, and just does whatever he wants. When he gets in that zone, the facilitating, the finishing at the rim. It's just hard to stay in front of him. So shout out to Jackson. Darius Johnson of Lee Green. Uh, Lee Green, elites played in our um, event a couple times this year, and Darius just continues to get buckets. Um, and he's just a dog with it when he when he gets going. Um, Prince Jones Bynum, the older brother of Princeton Bynum, TJ Ford, another Friday night dude, um, just a bully, um, was getting, getting off just like his little brother was, but he was able to finish a little bit more at the rim. That's why I put him in more of the go-getters than the uh, shot makers. But Prince Jones Bynum, I'm one of those Friday night. If you don't play in gas and you're only here for a good time, not a long time, hey, get to it, young bro. Get to it. Uh, moving on down the list, Mason Shepard, Pro Skills, EYBL, one of those freshmen with plenty of momentum, came in Sunday and played. Um, got busy um, in two big time games for that Pro Skills EYBL. A lot of momentum from Rockwall and the run they had this year. And great to see him staying assertive. Antoine and Antonio Shannon, second to none. One of our favorite gas, the teams that we've seen in Gasso. Just two dogs. Uh, just, I mean, they might be the absolute definition of just go-getters. Um, whatever that may be, but that, that's what they are. Um, I gave, on the schedule, um, ASAC came and played them uh, Sunday. And I was like, you know what, second to none. They want that smoke. And it was a fun game that I just posted on our YouTube channel. Um, and they wanted all of the smoke there. So shout out to them two boys. Uh, Caden White, Team Nation, Braswell product. Um, I walked over to see their court for a little bit. Heard some good things throughout the weekend from Linda Cook, so I had to go see him right away. He was in that kick cat, uh, getting to it off the mid-range pull-up I saw it right away. So I was like, yeah, that boy, go getting it. And uh, Trey Martin, Austin Unbreakable, San Antonio Southwest had a hell of a season, and I popped in Sunday to see Austin Unbreakable. And he's just the go-getter mentality of getting a bucket, Physical, on the boards, hitting shots, just everything you want. Um, excited to see more of Austin Unbreakable this summer. Um, but Trey Martin, definitely a go-getter. So moving on to uh, my next topic. I will say this. I'm flying through these. Um, like it's, it was, it's hard. We've done the Gasso cast, talking about a lot of names, almost an hour today. Go see that on our social media platform. Um, we have a newsletter coming out where I'm getting my my all tournament team, so I'll be naming some guys there. So in a normal week, when I have more time, it feels like I can give more like love to what's going on here. But we've just covered so many players in the moment. I mean, our coverage at Gasso, like real time, is like legit. So it was hard for me to come up with a list that was kind of fresh. So if I'm flying through this, I apologize. Um, you still on acting bad, though. So, hey, it don't matter if I'm talking for an hour. I'm talking for 15 minutes. So, yeah, I'm moving on. Oh, yeah, and before you, yeah, I'm a company man today. Company man today. Uh, got the Gasso brand on me. Um, but I just ordered some new some, 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 some new merch. So, next week, we might have a little something different. Um, but for today, G Team Gasso on the body. Guards that can guard. I tell people all the time, I don't play college basketball unless I was able to guard because your boy wasn't hitting jump shots like that. Um, so I really like to find guards that can really guard. Um, the first two, dang near have nightmares thinking about these two. Sean Parks and Jalen Red Crittenton of ASAC. 
Um, when you have these two guys on the court at all times, it just creates severe havoc with that ASAC squad, and they both take super pride in what they do, picking up 94 feet. And I'll, I'll say this. That shit, sorry for cussing, but that stuff's cool to pick up 94 feet, but if you're just going to get beat right up there, then it's just, what, is, what are we doing? These two guards are turning you uh, multiple times, making it, making it really deadly for you. So shout out to them, taking pride in defense. I know both of them do. So this one was interesting because I hadn't seen Jet McCaslin, GPS West Texas, in a while. Everybody knows Jet. Everybody knows he's gonna shoot it, but he's added the frame. So I want to talk about the coach's son. Shout out to Jet McCaslin, the coach's son. But you have Jet, five nine, five ten, five eleven, whatever you want to call yourself. Small guard, but he got into the weight room. So now, as a coach's son, your dad's probably gonna preach weight room. He got a little. He filled out a little bit. You still a little guy, but he filled out there. He already can shoot it. Um, you got to be able to shoot it as a smaller guard. And now the one thing I saw, which is terrifying, is that he's going to bust your face all day long. No, did he? Bust your face uh, all game long, hitting threes all over the place. And then he's not going to back up and be cool. He's right here in a stance, ready to guard. Um, so that stood out. And then Namdi uh, Ubuwiki of second and none. Um, I was hesitant. I didn't know where I wanted to put you this weekend in this acting bad series, but because I mean you're you're a freak athlete above the rim. I see you in warm ups. Let's do in game stuff with that too. But he's just another one of them those dudes that just mixes it up, causes havoc, long arms, athletic burst, um, and 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 takes pride in what he does. So shout out to y'all guards that can guard. Um, comment below. I want to I want to know more guards that can guard. Um, because to be honest, that's one of my favorite traits of acting bad, taking pride in guarding. So let me know whether it's a teammate. Uh, if it's you, you better prove it because I'm going to I want I want to see what it looks like. Uh, coaches, shout out to your guards that really want to guard and take pride in it. So as we wrap up this week, I know I've been we've been doing 30 minute, we on 11 minutes right now. OK, this last topic, uh, E for effortless Lee. Usually it's E for effort. You know how you got in class, uh, but E for effortless Lee, these these three dudes that I'm about to mention just play the game just at a different type of time. Like, whatever they want to do, they can do it. Uh, Trey Pink, who's the lead in 2027. I was excited to see him down there. And he lived up to it. Four generalship. The shooting for him. He never really won. Time. Shout out to Kuzali Lee and shout out to Trey Pinker. Parker Overstreet. Um, I don't know what it is, man. He just moves different than everybody else. The way he glides, it looks like he's never trying. He'll be at the three-point line all of a sudden. He's finishing inside hand finish at the rim. Um, it's just different. I, that's all I know how to explain is that it's different. I'm gonna put some clips of him right here so you can kind of see what I'm seeing. What I'm seeing. I just don't know how to explain it, but I mean it's effortlessly. So E for effortlessly. Uh, Parker Overstreet. And then my final one. Caden Bug Edwards, man. Um, YGC. I'm going to go out on a limb and say he's going to have one of the more stock rising performances across the country. Um, he'll be on the NXT Pro platform. A shout out to my guy Matt Reynolds over there. I've been knowing him for a while. Um, I know they're excited to have him there. And I can only imagine that his stock is going to rise through the roof. Um, he's out for blood, man. Um, Duncanville has a high precedent. Um, and he's... He wants it all right now, so expect him to have an unbelievable, unbelievable summer with YGC. Uh, when my boy um, Coach Kevin over there, they're ready to do a lot of big things. Um, but just yeah, to finish this week's episode, like I said, it's so overwhelming that I just didn't even want to dive any deeper than I am now. Uh, super blessed to have a great week. Two cities, one gaso. Um, yeah, it was a lot. But the one thing I'll take away from it is that there's a lot of dudes, um, multiple teams with a lot of depth. Uh, it's April now, so we're starting to see some rosters kind of figure themselves out, some prospects um, get their names on the radar. At Gaston, we have a big scouting service that hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of college coaches subscribe to. We're adding new names. Adding names means we think you can play at the college level. Um, that was a big part of what we saw this weekend, just a lot of new names. Uh, welcome to the show type stuff. The next gens, the 26s, the 27s um, down in Houston. Whew. 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 Yeah. 
y'all are for real. And then, I mean, the DFW area speaks for itself. A lot of Houston, um, a lot of Austin, a lot of San Antonio. Um, it's just a great time to be in Texas. And it's just, it's just heating up. April 19th through 21st, um, the gas will have almost every every shoe um, brand represented will be at Drive Nation. Um, and what that means is that when you play in Gasso's and, and you rock with Gasso, we're going to give you all some matchups, um, especially those independents. Um, so be on the lookout. I'm excited to make the next schedule. Um, and I'm always excited to see who's the next uh, dude to really be acting bad. So until next time, a little shorter episode uh, this week. Uh, but hey, I'm flying through this, so I'm already excited to make the next one. So be expecting more acting bads more frequently. Uh, but don't quote me on that. But yeah, until next time, comment below. Um, share who's acting bad. I'm sure I miss a lot of people. Comment below. I'll shout you out on social media. Uh, but yeah, keep acting bad. I'm out. Ice is the